have had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when I look the chance to. You know, he has fought to keep me bound. But my God has been good to me. No, oh, good to me. More than the world.
God. Right. Well, you got to see the finish because God see the finish. God see the repent. They are Daniels and Abrahams. But the devil want to block you. And he throws all kind of darts to mess up your mind. Yes. But you know one thing I know? That what God has blessed, no man can hurt. be shaken but I was shaken but I know the God whom I serve was the same God that gave me that boy that gave me that boy when he was in my womb I gave him back to God and I know that that God would come through for me so if you are here this day and you have boys or girls behind bars know that that same God will open up the prison invited me and I was just happy to be invited to this great occasion can we give the king of kings and the lord of lords a round of applause amen and I come to testify that God will be more than enough amen he's going to be your overflow is there anybody here today that God has been more than enough? Yes, yes Lord. I mean, some of us have been sick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto death. But I need the church to say, but God. But God. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. And we've even stood at our Red Sea. Yes. Amen. Yes. Not knowing what to do. Amen. Amen. But God came through for us. Yes. And I just come to let you know that God has been more enough, more than enough for me. Yes. And the best is yet to come for this church. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yes. Come on and lift your hands and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Do you love the Lord today? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, he's good. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Yes, he is. He's more than enough. Jehovah Shalom 
cut it down for another five minutes and this young lady over here cut it down about a, an hour so I, I think I have about 30 minutes and the bishop got up here and I just 
And I was like, dog, I ain't got nothing to say. I might as well just get up and do the benediction. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. God spoke to me about 15 years ago, and he said, there's going to come a time when the message, preaching, ain't going to have to be done because the praise and the worship is going to have the power and the authority of the Spirit in it. See, there is nothing in the scripture that says God inhabits but the praises. God don't inhabit your preaching. He don't have it your praying. But when you start praising God, you sing your praises at the hill, God says, I come now and I listen to what you got to say. Because I don't want you to preach to me. But when you sing to me, when you worship me, yes, Lord. when you worship me, you, God says, I come. Yes. I come. And see, that's the thing that we need to get rid of is that attitude that, you know, we got to have the word. You got the word in the, in the song. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and, and when the bishop came up here and, and he was sharing, you know, it's like I've been to Liberia and they do that. Yes. They get excited. Praise they ain't God. got but five cents. I mean, literally, to give. But they are so excited when it comes time to give because they're believing yes. for a miracle. Yes. They're believing Amen. that God's going to come and that they believe God is real and they want to experience the presence of God and the yes, power Lord. of God. Yes. That's one of the messages and part of the message I want to give today. As the ministry goes forward, you have to believe. Believe. Yes. Believe. Because you got to believe in who you trust and who you trusted in. Why are you doing this? If you're doing it for money, you're in the wrong place. Because you're coming to ministering the sheep. Sheep are stingy. So you can't be doing it for the money. Not from the sheep. But from the Lord. I want you to turn with me. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to keep you long because we've been here a long time. But it's been good, eh? Hallelujah. Turn with me to uh, Proverbs 3. I, I got so many... God. It's like, I don't want to preach. I just want to sit down and let y'all keep going. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Proverbs 3, 5, you're starting off a ministry. You're starting off anything that, whether it's a, a, a corporate ministry like this, or you're starting off a personal ministry, or just your personal life, this scripture should be branded on your soul. Yes. Branded on your heart. Yes. Look at verse 5, because the first word is what's going to make you successful. Trust. Right. Trust. And then it tells you who to trust in, in case you don't know. Because see, a lot of times people are trusting in themselves. Right. They're trusting in money. They're trusting in people. But the word of God says, trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And not only does it tell you who to trust in, it tells you how to trust in him. Okay? Not with your mind, with your intellect, with your knowledge, with your money. It says with all your heart. That's your inner soul, your inner being, who you really are with your heart. Do you really trust in God? And when you're going forth to the ministry, you have to recognize that, listen, I am doing this because I trust in the Lord. Because I know God has called this ministry forward. God has called us to lead this ministry, and I know that I'm in the right place. Because if you don't trust in the Lord, let me tell you, she will run you crazy. You got to know who you're trusting in. Because you can't be trusting in them. God loves you and he called you with a purpose in his mind and in his heart. He created you for a reason. And God says, trust in me with all your heart. And then he tells you something not to do. Don't lean on what you think. Don't lean on what your neighbor said. Don't lean on what mom and daddy did. Amen. Because God is the same God, but guess what? What he did with mom and dad, he ain't going to be doing it to All you right. and through you. Thank you Lord. But you have to lean not to your own understanding. And when you go forward in your ministry, pastors, when you realize that God is telling you to go in direction that even sometimes the congregation don't want to go, you got to go back to verse 5 and the first word. Trust. Who you trusting in? Lord. Who you trusting in? You can't let nobody try to dictate to you and take charge of the ministry that God has called you to obey, see? Because someday you're going to have to give an account. Yeah. And you can't say, well, sister so-and-so got upset because I wanted to do it this way. Yeah. 
I remember when I first came into the ministry, I had some a young men and, and, and a couple of men that were, 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 they weren't too excited about me coming, but they came to me and they, they were complaining about some things. And I had to let them know, I said, you got the wrong person. Wow. All right? You don't tell me what to preach, when to preach, and how long to preach. Because God has dealt with me on that. Okay? You may be a part of the board and you got some, some issues and you can keep track of the money and all that. But when it comes to the pulpit, pastor, I got to trust in the Lord. Amen. I ain't worried about how much money you're going to give me because I don't look to you for my money. And that's the other thing. As a ministry, you want to make sure that you're trusting in God for your finances. I had a pastor ask me one time, says, I was in Jamaica and, and he asked me, he said, you're going to be doing a week-long teaching here. How much do you charge? And I was young, and I was like, I don't know. You know, I went by freely you receive, freely you give. All right? He says, well, you can't come to my church and spend the whole week teaching my people and, and, and then don't charge anything. I said, well, I, I'm only here because God told me to come here. All right? You gave the invitation, but the Lord told me to come. Amen? Yeah. And you know what? I ministered by the Spirit, but then I say, you need to just take up a love offering. And whatever God tells you to give me, you give that. But just take up a love offering. I mean, that'll solve it. I'll take whatever is raised. It was the largest offering that church ever raised. He was mad. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Serious. He was mad. See, when you trust in the Lord, you ain't got to worry about how much money somebody's going to give you. You don't want to work for them. You work for the Lord. Yeah. When you go to your job, you work as unto the Lord. Yeah. My last job that I have, I'm full-time ministry now, but the last job I had, I had a guy that was upset with me. He didn't like the way I was running things because of the, and, and what I was saying to him. And I just said, listen, I need to tell you something. Number one, I don't work for you. I work yes, as unto Lord. the Lord, so I don't work for you. I work for God. Amen. All right? And if you don't like what I'm doing, you need to go talk to the boss. Come on now. All right? But I'm going to do what is right. Yes. Long story short, he worked for me, and I gave him a raise or not. Because God changed the whole thing around. Praise God. You need to trust in the Lord. Money is not a problem for God. God told me that a long time ago. says, money ain't a problem for me. I'm not broke. He said, and he was talking to me, he said, you're the problem. That's it. You ain't trusted in me for it. That's it. That's he says, I'm not broke. You up there preaching and teaching, but you still relying on your skills, on yourself, on you to try to gain money when, you know what, guess what? I got the banks on a thousand hills, that's what he put it. He ain't doing cattle no more. Okay, he did the bank time. He just cattle gone. That's, yes, that's the whole day. He got banks on a thousand hills. My God is not broke. You hear me? Your God is not broke. He ain't broke. He never will be broke. If he runs out, he'll create some more for you. All you got to do is what? Trust in him. And lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to what you think and what you feel and what you thought of. Lean not to that which is in need but what the Spirit of the Lord tells you to do. Because you're going to find a lot of people who are in need. Jesus told the disciples, the poor are going to be among you always. Always. But you have to understand something. God didn't call you to be broke. No. He didn't call you to be poor. See, people, a lot of times people think that Jesus and the disciples, they were broke. And they say, you know, we, we got to pattern our lives. Jesus and the disciples weren't broke. Nope. Let me tell you, how many times you have seen anybody who's broke that's got a CPA working for them? <laughs> if you're broke, you don't need somebody taking care of the books. <laughs> Wasn't Judas, what was Judas' job? <laughs> if you're broke, you don't need somebody handing your money. <laughs> Amen. And you got to realize that he called business people. He called people with money to follow him. He ain't gonna get no broke people to follow him. <laughs> he had people that understood money, understood how to make money, understood how to manage money. They are the ones. So, with pastors, when you get people with business uh, uh, abilities and acumen, you gotta nurture them to be who they are called to be. You don't need to put them in an office. That's not what they're called to. They're called to be 
financiers in the kingdom of God. They're called because, like the bishop said, it takes money. It took me a lot of money to go to Liberia. Oh, yeah. A whole lot of money. I know it took you a lot of money to go to Africa, to, to Nigeria. And where does that money come from? Say, y'all. <laughs> See, God wants you to input so that we can output. Amen? See, God wants you to give. When we raised money today, it was for the word of the Lord to go forth through the calling and the nurturing and, and the, the, the ministry of this particular ministry. You just planted seeds. Every last one of you just planted seeds in this ministry so that it can go forth and fulfill the vision that God has given them. Amen. Everything that happens in this ministry, every prosperity that comes forth from them, you got a hand in it. Amen. I tell people all the time, God created multi-level marketing. See, some people thought Amway did it and Herbalife and all that. No, God created multi-level marketing. Okay? Yeah, y'all don't believe me. <laughs> when you bless him, yeah. and he goes forward to do the will of God, he was able to go forward because of the blessing that you received from God to bless him so that he can go forward and be a blessing. Amen. And when that person goes forward and be a blessing, you get a part of that too because it wasn't for him blessing them, they wouldn't have gone forward because you blessed them and that's why they were able to go forward so that they can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Got that? Yeah. And it just keeps on going. Yeah. So all y'all should be rich. Yeah. Should be very rich. I tell people, I say, you know what? When my wife and I, we're at a point in our lives where we were without, we were struggling, trying to make ends meet. And I went to the Lord, pastors, you know, I just went to God and said, God, I feel like a hypocrite. That's okay. Yeah. We're going to pay the bill later. <laughs> I told the Lord, I said, I feel like a hypocrite because I'm preaching about the blessings of the God, the prosperity of God, and I'm broken than everybody in the church. Come on, I said, this picture has to change. Come on. And God told me, he says, it can. You've just been trusting in the wrong place. See, when this ministry go forth, when you go forth in this ministry, you got to remember, Jesus said, I ain't giving you no land to go and farm. He says, I'm going to be your great reward. See, if we go back to the Old Testament on that, the Levites didn't get any land. All right? They didn't have to go out and till the soil. They didn't go out to raise sheep. Jesus, the Lord said to them that I will be your great, I will be your great reward. I will be your inheritance. So God asked me a simple question. You want the sheep to pay? You want me to pay you? You know, I like, you know, God, I want you. Okay. Who do you want to pay your bills? God. God asked me the first thing when we're in debt. And he said, if you will stop cursing your money. You can have more. And I say, Lord, how in the world do I curse my money? Every time you say, oh, Lord, I don't know how much. I, I, I don't know where the money coming from. Lord, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills. You just cursed your finances. If you're going to say, I love the Lord. I have given my tithes and offering. All my blessings come from the Lord. Everything I have is the Lord's. Then why are you going to pay your bills? I always ask people, how many of y'all got bills? Good. Ain't nobody raise their hands. I know some of you said you do, but you weren't supposed to raise your hand. Because if you want to get out of debt, here's the first clue. Give God all your bills. See, when God has something and God takes over something and takes charge of something, then he's responsible for it. When God is, is, is in charge of this ministry, guess what? He will be responsible for it. If you got a vision from the Lord and God says, I want you to do this, this, and this, you just give it back to God. See, God gives, and then he expects you to give it back to him so that he can give you the instruction on how to use what he gave you. Amen. Amen. See, God wants you to go forward with this ministry. He wants you to be a blessing, but he wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. He wants this ministry to be blessed to be a blessing. You don't look at the size of your ministry, you look at the size of your God. Amen. Because see, the number of people don't mean that's the size of your ministry. The number of people trusting in the Lord, that's the size of your ministry. What could you and five millionaires do? Huh? Huh? 
All, hey, all of a sudden you don't see it ain't about the money. God's got all the money. Yes, Lord. All he's asking you, will you trust me? Yes, Lord. When the Lord first called me, I begged, barred, and steal. I tried to do everything I could to avoid being in the ministry. Did not want to be up here. And, you know, it's been about 23 years now since I've been here. But I ran from the ministry. I didn't want to. I was a deacon. I was not, not a deacon. I was a, uh, uh, I tried doing the ushers. I, I did Sunday school. I did everything I could in the church to please God. Lord, leave me alone. I'm helping you over here. I don't want to be a preacher. Don't want, I'm sorry. I just don't want to do this. And I tried to be a good person and do all them good things and God wasn't satisfied. My God. When you go forward with your ministry, when you recognize that it is God who's called us to this, then it's God that you got to trust. It is not about how things go well, how things go poorly. It's about God because God's going to simply ask you, did you do what I called you to do? Okay. He didn't ask you about your success. Why? Because the success, the result is always the Lord. Yes. Amen. You are not called. You can't save nobody. Do you know that? Amen. Well, all you can do is give them the good news, and now it's up to them. Now it's between them and the Lord. Amen. But you're called to give that good news. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Amen. He says, go and lay hands upon the sick. Raise them up. What did Jesus tell the disciples to do? Go and preach the word. Preach the kingdom of God is at hand. But then he told him to do something else. He said, trust me. Believe in the power that I give to you. Lay hands upon the sick. Raise the dead. Do those things that has to be done for the people of God to realize the power of God. See, there is the word of God and there's the power of the word of God. God wants you to give the word and to demonstrate the power of God. I've gone to a lot of third world countries that have gotten the word. They know the word. You can go. We went to a, 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 a place in Jamaica. We went out to the place called Union. Most of the people in Jamaica don't know where Union is so far in, in, in the middle of the country. And how many of y'all are from Jamaica? Don't know Union. <laughs> But well, we went there, okay? But the people knew the word. We started quoting, they would finish the sins. And we ministered, we ministered. And we went, and I was with the group. They ministered. I was just there as a sort of a chaperone. They just needed somebody black to be there. That's what it was. All right? And uh, they gave the invitation. Nobody moved. They felt so dejected. Holy Spirit says, get the microphone and tell them I want to heal somebody. So I asked for the microphone. I said, do y'all believe in prayer? We believe in prayer. We believe that God still heals today. Do y'all believe that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We know that God can. I said, I know you know that God can, but can you believe that God will? Okay? So this one lady comes up with this little kid and she says, here, heal him. He's got asthma. Can't play football with the other kids because he's got asthma. So I looked at the little boy, he's about 13 years old, looked like he was about 10. Mm. And I reached down to him and I said, do you believe? And he said, yes, I believe. I said, God's going to touch you right now, okay? He said, okay. So I prayed for him. I felt the power of God flow through me. And it was on a little hill. I said, run up that hill and run back. He said, I can't run. His, his attitude was, I can't run up there. Are you crazy? I got asthma. I said, just trust God. He doesn't heal you. Yes. He ran about halfway up and stopped. I said, no, go all the way to the top. I want you to come down as fast as you can. He started back down, and he was doing like a half jog. But then all of a sudden, even in his mind, he realized, I can run and breathe. I am breathing. The little boy took off, yes. running down the hill, biggest smile on his face. Old people came to the Lord that night after they saw the power of God. In your ministry, seek the power to be demonstrated. Yes, Lord. Don't seek just to be a preacher. Don't seek just to be an evangelist. Yes. Seek to be all of that and more. Amen. Because the Lord God is here. We have the Spirit of God. Jesus didn't do anything until the Spirit of God came upon him and he had the power. He didn't do a miracle before he got baptized. Right. It was only after he got baptized that the miracles came. Yes. And why did he have to be baptized? Because the Spirit of God is here to bring the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Yeah. I'm going to say this. If you want to see 
the ministry of God operate in your life, you got to recognize where it comes from. Yes. I'm going to tell you something the Lord did, dealt with me this past year. And it, it was so obvious, but it was not obvious. When we pray, a lot of people pray to Jesus. And we're praying in the name of Jesus, but they're also praying to Jesus. Jesus, please help me. Please, be, Jesus, do this. And Jesus, do that. And Jesus, I need. Right? We do that. And Jesus is like sitting up there. Why are you talking to me? Jesus said, I had to leave so that I could send somebody to take my place. So if I sent somebody to take my place, then why are you looking at me to do something that I sent that person to take my place to do? Amen? See, the Spirit of God is here right now. That's why you feel so good. That's why it's been almost three hours and none of y'all got all antsy. It's just the Holy Spirit. And any other time, y'all be, oh man, are you kidding me? He's getting ready to preach now after all this time? See, y'all didn't do that, did you? Okay, the ones of y'all that did, don't admit it. But it's the spirit of God upon your ministry that God says, I'm going to bring it forth. I'm going to bring it forth with power and authority. As you seek the miracles, then they're going to happen in you and through you. And that's what's going to bring about the people and the, 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 the work that God wants to be done in the ministry. We have to start expecting. With no expectation, you don't get. You get what you expect. Yes. If you came in here expecting nothing, that's what you're going to leave with. Nothing. nothing. You go to church expecting nothing because you're going out of religiousness, then, then that's all you're going to get when you get there. If you go to church and looking for a good feeling, you're going to get your good feeling and live your same life the same old way. Wow. Amen. Wow. Preachers find out how many times you preach a year. We don't say you preach every, every Sunday, that's 52 sermons. If you lead Bible study, that's another 52. Preachers, that's 104 messages, anointed, spirit-filled, with the power of God, 104 messages. How many does it take to change people's lives? One. One. Yes. So why are we all the same? My God, come on. We don't expect to be the same. And I'm saying this to the congregation now. Don't expect your pastors to be the only one flowing in the anointing of the power of God. The same spirit of God is going to be on them as leaders, going to be on you as congregants. Because God is calling all of you together for this ministry. He didn't just call them. He, otherwise, it would just be two people here. All right, but he called everybody. How many of you are part of this ministry or, 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 or will be a part of this ministry? Just raise your hand real quick. Amen. Okay, so God has called you to be here. Why? Because you have been appointed and anointed to do something to help that ministry go forward. Amen. And so what we need to realize is that God loves us. And so when we look at this scripture, once again, go back to it. And lean not to your own understanding, it says, in all your ways. Now, does everybody understand the word all? Yes. Do we need an explanation of all? Because see, sometimes we like to give God and talk about God in some of our ways. It didn't say some, it said all. So in everything, even when you get up, when you put on the clothes, did you ask God if he wants you to wear what you wear today? No. Yes. No, Holy Spirit may have wanted you to wear that blue dress instead of the red one. Did you ask him? No. <laughs> Hallelujah. In all things, I'm acknowledging God. God is in yes. even my dress. God Amen. is in everything that I do and say and that I believe in. God is there. And so I have to acknowledge Amen. his presence. And going back to finances, when you give, you should be giving as unto the Lord with the understanding that God is in the business of blessing his children. Yes. Yes. There's so many scriptures that talks about giving and blessing. Uh -huh. But the prerequisite is giving. Yes. Yes. You want to get out of debt? My wife and I got out of debt. We're out of debt, and we got, we got money in the bank, and we all know man nothing but love, Praise including God. our home. Amen. Including our home. Amen. 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 And that's from God. Amen. We don't have to worry about bills each month because God has provided. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. From God. Not necessarily from the ministry. From God. But I give him all the praise and honor Yay. for it. Why? Because God taught me a long time ago, if I trust in him and lean not to my own understanding, that he will, guess what? Go to that next scripture. He shall direct your path. 
Are you trusting in him with everything? So pastors, you got to trust in him for the ministry. You got to trust in him in all of your ways, in everything that you're doing, in everything you're thinking that God's called you to do. You just got to trust him. And a lot of times God's going to call you to do stuff that don't make no sense. That just slap is, you know, you don't want to say it to God, but you, you're saying it under your breath. That's crazy. Why in the world would you call me to do this? When I first got into the ministry, I had, okay, I said, finally gave in to God. And I said, I'm going to go and build this church. I'm going to go and build this church. Listen to my word. Okay? And I know how to build stuff. I'm educated and I know how to do stuff. I'm going to go out and get me a bus. I'm going to load that bus up with a bunch of youngers. And then them youngers going to come in. We're going to give them a good time. And then all them families going to come along with them youngers. Along. And I know how to do this. And God says, no. No. I mean, clear, no. That's not what I called you to do. I didn't call you as an evangelist. Wow. And I'm like, I don't understand. God asked me later on, he says, who's in charge of this ministry? Who's in charge of your ministry? You had a program today. Yeah. And I saw that program earlier. You ain't do nothing according to that program today. <laughs> it changed. Amen. Big time it changed, right? We talked about that this morning. It, it's gone. It's like, I'm like, who are all these people? I mean, ain't none of that was on the program we talked about. Okay. But you got to learn as he's learned to lead and be led by the Spirit of God. And you follow him. Because a lot of times what you want to do is not what he wanted to do. And you could, Lord, I thought for sure you told me to do this. He said, yeah, but that was five minutes ago. I changed my mind. I want you to go this way now. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to change? See, we get so hung up. God asked me who, I, you know, I'm a good old Baptist boy. I was born and raised Baptist. Okay? Born, I mean, to the bone. My family started the first Baptist church in 1919. You did not, you lived and you died a Baptist. And if you went any other place, you was ostracized. For a period of time, they didn't like you. Why are you going to that church? Amen. Amen. I went to a white church and, and yeah, I was going because they were really teaching the word. Yeah. And I wanted to be taught. Right. Why are you going to white church? I said, it ain't white no more. Ha! <laughs> I, I go there. It ain't white no more. Okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> it used to be a white church. It ain't white no more. Okay? Because I'm now. You got to recognize and go where God tells you to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It wasn't that I wanted to go there, but the Holy Spirit led me there because Jesus. he knew I needed some training. Yeah. I needed some teaching and I wasn't getting it. And what God showed me was that he had a major purpose in my life. Every last one of you in here today, God has a major purpose on your life. That purpose has got to come forth. And what the word purpose means. I ministered this morning on this. And the word purpose means something someone intends to do or to get. You intend to do this. You're purpose. You've got to be purposed in your ministry. You've got to do this on purpose. Okay? You're not doing this because it sounds no on purpose. I've got to be on purpose. I want you to hear me for a few more minutes. God says, I want you to be on purpose of my yes, will Lord. and my way. If I called you to be blessed, then you got to be on purpose to be blessed. If I called you to prosper, then you got to be on purpose to prosper. Does, you, does God's word says that he wants to prosper you? The answer is yes. All right? A lot of you don't even know God wants them to prosper. God wants you to be prosperous. He says, you give and I will give it back to you. Press down, shake together and overflowing. I want you to prosper. I'm not going to give it back to you tit for tat. You give me a dollar, I'm going to give you a dollar back. Another scripture says he's going to give it back to you 30, 60, 100 fold. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. See, most people will say yes in church, but they don't. In their heart, they don't believe that. I started believing it. I started realizing that God was true to his word about everything. It wasn't that he was true about these over here and not true over here. That's because I looked around and I didn't see anybody. I didn't see too many millionaires in the church. I say, God, I want to be a millionaire. Your word says if I give, it, I ought to give a lot. Yeah. Believe it. And God was like, yeah, but you don't believe it. You don't expect it. Wow. Yeah. Are you understanding? I do. God wants you to know what he has. And then you have to purpose yourself 
to believe in his word. You got to purpose yourself to believe this is ministry that God has called. You, we don't need another church. You know what? We don't need another church. But if God purposed you and called you to start one, then you got to obey him. Yes. You might say, Lord, there's 10,000 other churches around here. God says, they, but they ain't doing what I called you to do. Okay? That's what you got to stay focused on. Purpose yourself for that. I want to close with this. Turn to Romans 8. In Romans 8, verse 28. That's right there. Okay? I told you all over there preaching with this. A couple words in here I want to key on. And we know. It's not we guessing. All right? We know it. Okay? That all things work together for good. Not for okay, but for good. Not for nice, good. To whom? To those who love God. Now, if you love God, then you should know. Yes, Jesus. Not be hoping. Got your fingers crossed, your rabbit foot in your pocket, or you around your neck. You know. Yes. Hallelujah. That God wants you to prosper. That God wants you to be successful. That God wants this ministry to go forward to accomplish the work that he's called it to. You know this. You got to know this. You can't be thinking and hoping and praying. Oh, no, you already should be past that point. You got to know this is what God has called you to do. This is what God is working out all these things together for the good. To those who are called according to what? His purpose. This ain't your job. This ain't your church. This is his church. It's his church. When God asks me who's in charge of the church, and he specifically asks me who's in charge of Sunday service, I say, you are, Lord. He said, well, you tell me when to start. You tell me how many songs to pray, say. You set up the whole selection of programs and songs. You tell me what to preach, how long to preach. You tell me how long to minister. You tell me how long to, to, to preach and when I have to stop. You tell me what I got to be out by. My God. Don't sound like I'm in charge. Don't sound like I'm in charge. And I had to purpose myself to believe that God was going to let me out at a reasonable time. <laughs> we had a service one day. We started at 10, at 3.30. Whoa. I got up and left and left the rest of the people there. Just told whoever last block up. Lord. So when the presence of God came, it was just such a the presence of God. I was whipped. I was wiped out. Preachers, y'all know what I'm talking about. You just ain't got no more energy to go. Oh and, you know, the spirit is sort of left that anointing is left and, it's, and you're through and then your, your body just sort of collapses. Yes. All right? But are you willing to trust God? Are you willing to change up the format? I was in Jamaica one time and, 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 and I was getting ready to minister and the Holy Spirit said, uh, go tell him that you, you, it's time for you to come up now. So I went to the pastor and said, listen, you know, you know, I always submit to you and everything, but Holy Spirit says that's enough singing. Because they were singing <laughs> these songs like they were funeral songs. And Holy Spirit wasn't liking that, so he said, stop it. Okay? So help me. The pastor said... We can't stop because she has practiced all these songs oh, and put person. them all together <laughs> for this time. So we have to continue to let her finish all her songs. I said, okay. I just wanted to share with you what the Lord said. I left him and went back. When she finished that song, the machine broke. That. broke. That's it, Lord. So help me. It broke. That's the Lord. It would not work, would not play another song. It just stopped working, I just sort of looked at him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> can, can I go up now? Yeah. They got no, no music to play, okay? Can I go up now? That's People, fine. trust the Lord. Trust yeah. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Yeah. You just acknowledge Him. You ain't got to take control. You ain't got to run things. You ain't got to just trust in Him. Yeah. He will
still deal with everything else that needs to be dealt with. If you trust in him with your ministry, he will make it happen. He will move. He will supply all your needs. You don't trust people for your money. You trust God for your money. You don't trust people for to bring other people. You trust God to bring them in. You don't trust people to lay on hands. You trust God to lay on hands. The power is in God and God alone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just give you praise right now that we can trust you. That we can know that you are always here for us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you that you are working out all things together for our good. Father God, we lift up this ministry right now to you. We declare that these two pastors that you've called to lead this ministry, oh God, would come forward right now. I want you to just stand if you would. Hallelujah. Just the pastors here. I want you to stand. Come forward. Father God, you are just obeying your will. Hallelujah. We give praise to you, Almighty God. Bishop. In the name of Jesus.
reason I came into the world. He came to die that we might live. And we are so grateful to God. We are so grateful. My, my wife is kind of like emotional at this time. And I am too because this is the beginning of something that we had a dream. I put it in my heart two years ago to start this work and to finally see it come to fruition. To finally see that over the years God has been saying to me, Tony, I'm faithful. And once again, He's showing His faithfulness. Showing His faithfulness. I, I, I didn't get up to preach you a message or anything, but I just want to. I want to thank him right now. I just want to give him some praise right now because he is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. I, I say that with all the sincerity of my heart because if there's a term in the, in the box of perfection that, profession that you know you're, you're, you're down and, and, and it begins to count one, two, three. And, and, and in my life, I was down to eight, nine. Maybe, maybe almost 10, but, but then God said, not yet. Amen, somebody. So to see this day, to see this day, and, 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 and amen, and, and the tower was not thrown in and because the enemy had beat me up and, and all, done all manner of evil against me. But, and the tower was not thrown, thrown in and God said, yeah, this is my child. Um, and to see I this day, this day, this time. day where he said, I have put my not of, of approval on you. I have approved you. I thank you today. I thank you today. I thank God today. I thank God today because there are so many that started on this path. There are so many that started out. There are so many of my friends that, that I knew that they're no longer here, but yet I still stand. Yet I still have a reasonable portion of health and strength. And yet I still can call on the name of Jesus. And I can still say, He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And I come to glorify Him today. Oh, glory to his name. I thank God. I thank God. 